to CBS 2018 in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, and I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Luciana Mermet, who is the Deputy Resident Representative of UNDP, and uh, very welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Max. It's a pleasure to join you here. Now, today is the first day of the Global Capacity Building Symposium here. I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, how important you think that ICTs are in achieving the 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Well, um, I think uh, the SDGs are all about ICTs. If you look at it from a data perspective, the uh, SDGs have data all over, written all over uh, the place. In a way, um, we have 17 goals. It's a much more ambitious agenda compared to the previous agenda. When you look at the MDGs, we only had eight goals. And the 17 goals uh, will entail monitoring 231 indicators, which means that we will have to have the capacity to gather data at a much more uh, precise level, at the country level, and not only at the country level, but also at the local level. And mm, much of the discussion that we had today in the panel with uh, senior experts from all over, all over the world touched on the issue of uh, access. Are we ensuring that uh, no one is left behind in terms of accessing um, ICTs? Are we also making sure that affordability is looked at? Because that's one of the main issues reaching those left behind during the MDG uh, period means that we, have, we will have to work at the margins. And that's, I think, one of the main challenges of this agenda regarding uh, technology and communications. We will have to make sure that those who were left behind before are not left behind now, but this will mean additional investments that not necessarily will come from uh, one single source. Partnerships was also very much featured. We discussed uh, the fact that in order to reach those uh, left furthest behind, we will need to uh, look at uh, very innovative partnerships with private sector, with NGOs, and those working on the ground. What about the symposium itself here in, in uh, Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic? How uh, much of an impact do you think it will have here on the ground? Well, I think the, the good thing about uh, these uh, symposiums is that uh, you get a lot of uh, cross-fertilization of ideas and you hear a lot of what has worked in uh, different uh, countries. So that's the first goal of any capacity building type of uh, symposium. But also I think we are, uh, we are having uh, many voices together. You do have here people from academia, those who are leading the research. You also have the practitioners who are leading the implementation of the policies that are researched by, by others. And you also have the decision makers, those who need to uh, get the funding and get the, the incentives in place in order to make public policy work. And uh, finally, uh, but not, not the least, the private sector that's supposed to um, operate in a new environment. There was much discussion around this new environment, right? This digital economy and how disruptive this digital economy is being for public policies, right? The, the whole sort of unilateral sectoral approach is no longer uh, viable for an SDG environment. We need to be much more uh, multidimensional in all the policies that we implement, and that's also applicable to the actors that are involved in the, in the solutions. I was going to ask you, how do you think the uh, public and private sector can work together in terms of preparing tomorrow's workforces? This symposium is all about capacity building. What are some of the ideas that you've been hearing today? Oh, that's an interesting point, actually, because one of the main issues that came up during the Q&A related to the, the work gap, right? What, what is the gap that we are witnessing at the, at the labor markets, uh, generally in this region, in the Latin America and, and Caribbean region, but also across, across the world? And there was a point made to the, relating to the Dominican Republic's uh, labor market. There's a huge demand from software developers. Also, there were cases made for the Caribbean countries, Argentina as well. There are uh, higher demand. The, the demand is not being met currently. And there has to be very uh, coherent alliances and partnerships across uh, government, private sector, and academia in order to uh, basically develop the skills at the, at the university or degree levels for whatever degree one uh, should look at in order to uh, meet the demand of the labor market. And one particular issue that came up, which I think is quite interesting from an SDG perspective, is the fact that uh, we need more women in the, 
in the labor market, in the STEM labor market, uh, more engineers, more women engineers, more women working in all the ICT sort of uh, world, because they are the ones, that, particularly in the Dominican Republic, uh, women are the most educated uh, individuals in the society, but not necessarily the ones that uh, capture the share of, of the labor market. So we need to work to build those incentives and to make sure that the, the, there's space for, for the youth as well. Well, Lucia, thank you very much indeed for sharing uh, a few of those thoughts with us today. And, um, and thanks very much indeed for being with here this, at the symposium. My pleasure. Thank you.